do I need to do start broadcast? I thought you did that already. I don't. Okay, hit start broadcast. The broadcast is now starting. Okay. All attendees are in listen only mode. Hi, good morning. My name is Allison Badger and I'm the cataloging librarian here at the Nebraska Library um, Commission. And um, today we're, this is Understanding Mark 21 and today we're going to talk about the introduction and overview that hopefully everyone here has had a chance to read. Um, can everyone hear me? And let me see what we have here. Um, let's see, I'm not very familiar with this software, so you're going to have to bear with me. Um, no, okay, um, if you could just type a message in, letting me know you can hear me, and let's see, attendees, okay, let me, I'm going to unmute your guys' mics. Um, click. Okay, maybe that's better. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hey, Mike, because we're having a lot of construction here. Okay, who is this? Okay, so I've muted you guys again because um, there was a lot of interference um, from someone. I'm not sure who that is. Um, if you guys just want to use the chat box and you can ask questions or um, uh, let me know what's going on. Okay, yeah, they are all muted. And so just as a reminder, this session is being recorded and I will post it. So um, anything you say or type will be, will be preserved for um, eternity. Um, so let's just get started. Let's just leap right into this. Um, so today I'm going to bring this up. You should all be able to see um, my monitor um, and the lovely handout, the introduction and overview um, of Mark 21. And um, this is actually a meme I found, uh, a friend sent it to me a few months ago um, with, hey girl, you know, I'm not usually the jealous type, but who is Mark? And I just thought that'd be a really great way to introduce Mark. What is Mark and how do we use it? And um, so I'm assuming most of you probably had a chance to do the reading. Um, were, are there any questions about anything in particular? Okay, um, I'm not seeing um, so far if there are. Okay, someone, okay. See, I'm getting this all figured out right now. I still have interference. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. Like I said, oh, I still have music playing. I still have interference. Okay, can you guys hear me now? I'm sorry, I don't know this software very well, and I did practice some, but not a whole lot. Um, and I apologize for that. Okay, well, I guess I'll just kind of go through the reading a little bit. Um, I know talking to someone earlier today that um, there are there's some confusion about Mark and RDA and having a lot of questions about RDA. And um, so Mark and RDA, as you probably know, are two different things. Um, RDA has certainly influenced Mark, and, and that's, um, there have actually been some changes in Mark as a result of RDA. Um, and 
as we go through the class, we will definitely touch on some of those changes. Um, you know, to me, MARC is the most um, basic thing that uh, a librarian, especially um, anyone who's doing any kind of cataloging, can know. Um, it really, for me, I found once I understood MARC that I could really look at a record and really know what was going on. And in fact, when I'm doing research a lot of times, I don't even look at the, the, the OPAC record. Um, I have an example. Well, that's not actually the one I wanted. Um, something like this. I actually will not look at this record, like the, the pretty. I'll actually go and look at the actual MARC record. And um, oh, good. People are saying they can hear me. I can hear you, but there is still music. I Yeah, but have the go-to. OK. The go-to music is still playing. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Like I said, I don't know enough about this to know how that is. Let me um the go-to music is still playing. Go to Okay, someone is saying um, if you are hearing the music, just to log out and then log back in. And that, yeah. So if you want to try that and then let me know what's going on. Okay, will do. Okay. Sorry, this is, I know, very disorganized and I'm kind of rambling here. <laughs> um. So anyway, if you've had a chance to go through the reading, um, you can definitely see how the MARC record, really how people use that MARC record and how the data gets entered, um, how that really can affect what um, your patrons are seeing on the front end. Um, you know, they can, you know, whether, and you can see how, how important it is to kind of get that MARC record correct. And that's something, again, we'll touch on more as we go through um, the different sessions, um, the different things that you can do that, um, you know, how that information, well, not necessarily how the information shows up, but um, um, how what you put in can impact what shows up. Um, so what I'm going to do is go back to my class website. And um, I guess what we'll do is we'll just we'll start by going through some of these resources here unless someone's got questions. Oh, wait a minute, I do see a question. Oh, okay, when I am adding information to the 260 field, I like to use the two state abbreviations, but I know this isn't the correct way to do it. Does it really matter? Um, so, there's two different ways to answer that question. Um, in RDA, um, one of the things, one of the goals of RDA, and I'm going to pull up RDA right now. The um, let's see, the toolkit. And so, for those of you who may have used AACR2 and had the big binder, I still have my binder anyway. <laughs> um, this lays out all the rules uh, or guidelines, as they call them, for RDA. And one of the things about RDA was to make, hopefully, records a little more user-friendly um, and to kind of do away with things like abbreviations. And so according to RDA, and RDA offers you a lot of different options, you can you're supposed to transcribe what you see on the item. And so if, for example, Nebraska is spelled out, really you should put Nebraska in. However, that's, that's really optional. I mean, if you want to do the two-letter abbreviation, that's fine. You know, it's not like there's the cataloging, the cataloging police are going to come get you. As I always tell people, you have to do what's right for your library, for, for your community. And honestly, for the most part, 
whether an abbreviation for a state is spelled out or not, it's really not that important. So I hope that answers your question. It's just one of those things that catalogers really like to obsess about. We're kind of a weird and wacky bunch, if you haven't figured that out already by now. Oh, okay. So <laughs> good. I'm glad I could answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, um, so yeah, that's RDA Toolkit, and you do have to have a subscription to access this. And I'm glad to see that you're back, Lori. Um, I'm assuming it's better for you. Um, and if you don't, and, and you don't necessarily need a subscription to RDA Toolkit to, um, if you're just copy cataloging, and I shouldn't say just copy cataloging. Um, I I do have one. I do go in and check the rules, the guidelines a lot. If I see something I'm not familiar with or I'm dealing with a format I don't really know a lot about. And but I guess what I'll do today, since there there don't seem to be a lot of questions about the reading and so I guess I'm assuming that you guys have all had a chance to do it and understand um, what MARC is, that basic understanding of what MARC is. Um, there are some great resources out there um, for helping you if you have questions about MARC, if you want to know more about MARC. Um, as it says in the reading, it is a Library of Congress standard. It's something that they manage and kind of curate. And so right now I've brought up the MARC standards page um, that the Library of Congress does manage. And you can see that we have, um, let's do, I guess, an arrow. Okay, so you can see over here off to the left, like the different formats. There's the bibliographic, which is what you will use, um, authority, um, and then the MARC code list, like for countries and languages, and some of the other stuff we'll get into a little bit later. And there's also, if you really want to get into MARC, you can come in and, um, let's see, how do I get rid of that? Go away. Um... Okay, so let's just do away with that. And there we go. Okay, so in the general information, you can come in and you can look. There's a, um, the frequently asked questions, um, how Mark and RDA play together, and... Um, all the different changes they've made over the years, all those different updates. And, oh, an introductory mark information up here. And I, this is not a resource I use a lot personally. And here's the bibliographic. So if you want to go in and learn a lot about how mark works, like in the 100 field, you can, in the 1XX. So, but like I said, this is not a resource I use a lot. I, um, I actually use, let me go back to, the one I use the most, personally, is the one that, the o, that OCLC puts out, that they do. Um, their bibliographic formats and standards. And this is this is up while I'm working on records. And I'm, I'm constantly in here looking and just verifying things if I'm not sure about the fields or um, anything like that. Let me go to this. Um, for example, if, do we get, okay, yeah, for example, if I'm not sure about a tag number or 
um, one of the indicators or the subfield, I will I will go in and check and make sure that things are right. And I just feel like this is an easier resource to get through. And they have a lot of really great examples. Um, for example, if you're really not sure how a name should appear, um, what I like to do is just go through and scroll through until I kind of find something that matches um, my situation, um, what I have in hand. And look at this and, and see how they have it done. And, and um, right now I do want to point out that no one expects you to remember all of this, all the names of the fields and the, the indicators and the subfields and all the technical parts. Um, it, it, you feel like at first that you do, but you, you, you don't have to. Um, it's... My goal is that I always want people to kind of know the lingo, to kind of know the terms a little bit. So when someone mentions like the 100 field, they have a good idea. They, they know what you're talking about or you know what they're talking about. And you have all these resources out there that you can refer to while you're cataloging, while you're copy cataloging. Um, so and a lot of this information here on this page, is it, it's more for the computer than it is for catalogers, but it does function as kind of a shorthand. Uh, you know, when catalogers get together or when we ask each other questions, we will use, <laughs> we'll use like the two, we'll just mention the 264 or the 300 and, and we, we're all kind of on the same page and we all, we all know what we're talking about. So it does come in handy then. Um, so, um, let's see. Okay, you guys don't have any questions. You're a really quiet bunch, and and that's fine. Um, I'm just going to continue kind of rambling on here. <laughs> um, let's see. Um. I know at first Mark can seem, and I've, I've said this, Mark can seem kind of overwhelming at first. You know, how does this all play together? And I think for me what really helped was realizing there, there are patterns within Mark. And on pages like kind of 10 and 11 really talk about that, or 10 talks about that a lot, um, about, um, for example, um, a 100. Um, that's essentially kind of the same as a 600 and a 700. It's always going to be a personal name. Or um, like a 110 and a 710 and a 610, They're, those are always going to be corporate names. And, um, you know, your physical information, it's always going to go in the 300s. And, you know, kind of your, your basic kind of publication information, that's always going to go in the 200s. And so that brings us down to the fixed fields. And this, and we'll get into this more later on. This is more kind of, um, the fixed fields really can kind of influence what shows up um, for um, a patron. Um, whether it's kind of a text or a map or um, like a, a CD. And so this is what it kind of looks like in OCLC on this page. And then you'll see, um, depending on your system, what ILS you use, it really can influence um, you know, the icons that a lot of libraries use for the format. And so if you've got, for example, the wrong type in here, um, you know, if it's like a CD, well, it may not show up as a CD. It may show up as a, you know, a book over here or a map. And I think for a, a lot of people, that's how they figure out what type what they want um, is by looking at this format, and it is. It's really, it's a really easy way to know what you're getting, 
and um, yeah, oh hey, that's it, that's the end. <laughs> um, so let me go back to here. So we've kind of gone through um, a little bit um, the mar where you can look if you need to check, you know, your MARC codes, your MARC, um, the OCLC and the Library of Congress. Um, let's see, we have commonly used MARC tags. And okay, so let me move that over here. And you can see these are just, this just shows the, ma the fields that you'll probably use a lot, that you see a lot, and those indicators and what each one means, and then the subfields that you will, you'll see. Um, and here, um, one of the things about RDA that RDA did change was that we no longer have the, the lovely GMD. Um, I know some librarians are really, really attached to the GMD. Um, and I can understand why. It's, it's a quick way of seeing what the item is. Uh, but that's been replaced. And we'll, like I said, we'll get into that a little bit more and um, in the next couple of weeks. So again, this just shows you the different kind of the different fields, um, and it also gives you a lot of examples. I think when I first started cataloging, I um, I looked a lot at examples, and I still look a lot at, at examples of how things were done, and kind of sorted it out that way. And I don't know if that's how. Um, oh, what is the GMD? Thank you. I'm sorry, yeah, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, and <laughs> but that is a really good question. Essentially, it was a general material designation, and it was just, and you'll still see the GMD, the subfield H, you will still see this in um, older records. Um, OCLC is in the process of going through and deleting Let's highlight this here. And deleting this from all their records, they will still take records that have the GMD. But any, it's basically, it's kind of your format, your medium. Um, and like you might see it, let me, um, let's see, let's go back here. Oh, that moves. Okay, sorry, I'm figuring this out as I go. <laughs> Let me go into, okay, let's just get rid of that. Okay, there we go. Let's, and I'm back in the OCLC um, site. Like I said, they have a lot of good examples. Let me see if they've got anything in here with, kind of shows you here. Um, let's see. Okay, here we go. So you'll see in that main title field, that 245, like the title, um, in this case, the green bag, and then next to it, you'll see essentially, you'll see the form, that subfield H, and so in this case, it's a microform. Um, if you look at the previous example, it's a sound recording. So it just tells you what the format is. Just a shorthand, quick way of saying, oh, okay. Um, and so when you're looking at the actual MARC record, um, it's a really easy way of seeing, oh, okay, this is what this is. And if there's not a GMD, then that meant it was a book. But like I said, it's, it's going away. Um, OCLC is starting to remove it from all its records. But it's, it's okay if you're still using it. Um, I hope that answered your question in kind of a rambly sort of way. Um, okay, so we'll just move on. I haven't seen a response about whether that answered your question or not. Um, 
So I guess what we'll do is we'll talk about the assignment that we had for this week. And this week, it's kind of a survey just of what you and your library are doing. Um, there we go. Um, how, where you get your MARC records from. Um, do you create them? Um, what kind of automated system are you using? Do you edit them? Can you customize? And, oh, hey, what we have another question here. Okay. Let's see. Um... Okay, sometimes when I do MARC records and my system doesn't already have the records submitted based by the ISBN, what is the best place to get correct records? Often when I look on the Library of Congress or WorldCat, I can't find the information I'm needing. Okay, so that is a really, oh, okay, I got another question here, a follow-up. So let me answer, um, I think it's, Rachel. Let me answer Rachel's question first, and then I'll go back and finish up with the GMD. Okay. Um, and so, Rachel, I think actually I might unmute your microphone because I, I actually have some questions for you. Um, you can't find the information you're needing. So what information are you needing, per se, in your records? I just muted myself, and now I'm unmuted. Um, let's see. Oh, it's Rochelle. I'm sorry. Okay, Rochelle. Um, I've... Did I just... Yes, you are unmuted. Um, so what kind of information are you looking for in your records, Rochelle? Are, are you just not able to ma like match up like the title information or the publication information or the description? Um, because that can get kind of, um, let me see here. Okay. Um, okay. Because um, sometimes it can be really difficult to find that record that does match everything you're looking for. And depending on what your library, your policies are for your library, we're bringing in records. Um, some of the libraries I've worked for, um, if it's like fiction, it doesn't have to be exact. You can always bring something in, like if it's the copyright or the publication date isn't right or the, publica the publisher isn't right. But pretty much everything else is the same. It's the same content. It's, you know, there aren't... Um, I guess additional things like introductions, um, you can go ahead and, and find something that's not necessarily like an exact match for a record, but is close to what you need. Um, oh, like where to place in Dewey. Um, to place, oh, okay, like a subfield, okay, mostly with nonfiction. Yeah, nonfiction can be really tricky. Um, and a lot of times what I do is I'll bring in something that's close and go in and make local changes or, um, or sometimes things just need to be corrected or sometimes they're doing it, we all read Mark a little differently. We all interpret RDA a little differently. And so sometimes their interpretation is a little different than, like, my interpretation. And so it kind of depends on what your local practices are. And as far as assigning call numbers, that, that's a whole other class. <laughs> um, I will give you... Um, some some advice that a mentor gave me once, which is I will quite often, and I do this now, is I'll look at if there's something similar, like the same subject in the collection, I'll go back and search in the catalog and see if I can't find something similar and, um, and put it there because, or at least that's a starting point for where to find it in Dewey um, if you're trying to match numbers in Dewey. And I, I hope that helps. Um, I had another question. Let me see. I still use the subfield H, just didn't know that it had a name. Will my ILS still use it in the future? 
You know, it, it's really going to depend on what y you and your and your library and your ILS decide what to do. Um, I believe they are still. I mean, there's there's nothing that says you can't use that subfield agent. It should still take it, and but it is. It's a really good question, and it's something I would encourage you to ask about if it's still going to be used as far as I know yes you can still put it in the record and it'll still show up it's just um, OCLC is going is doing is not having records that will have that subfield H anymore and I I don't create records with the subfield H um should I use Library of Congress oh I'm sorry we're back to Rochelle now um, Oh, in terms of getting your records or, okay, thank you. Um, and let's see, yes, and getting them. You can. Um, you can get records from Library of Congress. You can get them from, if you go into like um, other library catalogs, you know, you can look at what's there in WorldCat. Um, I've always worked for libraries where we've gotten our records from OCLC and we bring them in in a variety of ways. And when we're searching for those records, um, typically we do like to do library records that were created by the Library of Congress because they are quote unquote America's library. Um, and so they typically the records are of a better quality. And I would say, yeah, those are really good records. And, oh, I've got a question here from Mary. Oh, it's a comment about um, there can be the same problem in Library of Congress classification and getting a good number. Yes. Um, not always sure what to do when you get that item, um, whether it's Dewey or LC or any other system you may be using. Um, and I've used mostly Dewey in my library, my career as a librarian. And here at the Library Commission, we use we use LC for some materials, and and so I'm always having to look like in our catalog and see, oh, where did we put this? Okay, that looks like it should fit there because, and a good way to know is I I'll look at the subject headings, um, and if the subject headings are the same or very similar, then you're probably getting everything in the right place. And um, oh, Dewey is easier. <laughs> Yes, Dewey. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of Dewey, and um, I, I do love Dewey. It's, um, this is kind of off track a little bit, but I remember when I was a library student in, in the library, and I was doing something like retrieving something, and we had just talked about Dewey in one of my classes, and I, I could sit there and see like how Dewey worked, how those divisions, those how they nested within each other. And um, for me, it was just this very magical moment when I when I realized I could see how Dewey worked. And I've never, I've not had that moment with um, LC. Maybe I will someday, I don't know. Um, so, <laughs> um, so anyway, back to the assignment. And so you, with the assignment, you can be as brief as you want or as detailed as you want. It's just kind of to give me a better idea of um, kind of what your experience is with MARC and what you and your library are doing with your, your MARC records. And, um, and so if I see that a lot of people just um, maybe aren't real sure about editing records or customizing things. Maybe those are topics we can touch on a little bit and talk about. And so that's the assignment that's due next week. And um, next week we will also get into, let's get out of here, let's... Um, we'll start talking about the 200 fields, the 2XX fields, which is, um, and you can see I've pulled this up on my screen. Um, I'm not going to get too much into this today because I think I've, I've given you a lot of information. And I don't want to overwhelm um, you too much. And I know some of you are probably going, oh my goodness. Um, 
there's a lot of information, there's a lot to know, and how do people remember all of this? And, and as I said, we don't. I don't remember. Um, I'm constantly having to look things up. Part of it is I'm horrible with numbers. Um, that's why I went into library science, hopefully to avoid working with numbers. Little did I know. Um, so, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so the 200s, that's kind of what I think of as your bibliographic information, your, your publisher, your title, your, you know, the people who are responsible for the creation of your item, kind of, kind of the information you might put in like a bibliography is a good way of thinking about that. And, um, and so next week I will talk about, oh, Ooh, ooh, that was not supposed to be up. I am so sorry. That was not supposed to be up. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. I did not mean for my email to be up. So, <laughs> um, and next week we'll talk about um, the assignment that will be due the following week. Um, so, so unless there are any more questions, or I've hopelessly confused you, and um I am going to actually let you guys go early this week and um thank you so much for being patient with me. Oh, yes, a bit confused. <laughs> Lori, I'm really sorry that you're a bit confused. I truly I'm not laughing at you. Um is there anything before we go? Is there anything I can do to help you um it's okay, I'm laughing too. <laughs> I'm not, okay. <laughs> okay, Mary has a question. I'm not sure I understand question six. Okay, thank you. I really appreciate it when you guys ask me questions um, and have comments for me. Um, I, don't, I don't feel like I'm, I'm talking to myself quite so much. So I'm pulling up that assignment again. Is it gonna come up? Yes, open up. It's just slow and I'm impatient. Okay, there we go. Question six. Does your automated, automated system allow editing customization of the web OPAC display? Okay, so that, that is actually a good question, and I can understand why people might not quite understand that. So let me, um, let me just go to the Nebraska Library Commission and pull up our catalog. So this is what our catalog looks like. Um, and let me just find something that I know we have and we can look at that record. Um, um, oh, okay. I'm going to get a lot of hits here, but, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so, oh, I got another. Okay, if I watch next week's class as a recording, will they, yes, yes. Um, we do ask that you, you, you do six of the online, six of the, the sessions, at least six of them live um, to get the full credit and have those credits count towards your cataloging certificate. And um, like I, I've said, you know, my hope for these, these sessions are to be kind of question and answer sessions, um, not so much me regurgitating material that you've read. Um, I know your time is very valuable, and so I really, I really want you guys to get as much as you can out of this. But if it, if it turn, if we end up going back to where I do PowerPoints, and I can definitely go through the material again for you guys, that's totally okay. But yes, um, Arlene, it's okay um, if you do watch the recording. It probably will be a lot like this one, very rambly and jumbled. But um, if you have questions, you can always email me. Uh, and I'm always, I'm always um, happy to answer your guys' questions. Anyway, back to the question about number six. Um, can our, our systems kind of, I guess, um, can we customize our settings and what appears? So this is the Nebraska Library Commission catalog, and we use Mandarin, which is kind of, um, and I'm new, I'm very new, as you have gathered, and I've said, um, so I don't know how many, what are, what quite all our options are for what can be displayed, but let's click on, let's click on this potato study. And 
so you can see this is what we all see on the front end. And in terms of what is customizable, um, you know, what fields do you want to show up here? You can see we have a limited number of fields that show up. We have notes, um, your subject headings, the description, the title, publication info. Um, and in some systems, you can do a lot more. You can have a lot more show up. Um, let's see. Let's do, actually, we're going to go look at Lincoln City Libraries. And we'll be looking at a different record. It won't be the same record. But let's go in and library catalog. And so they are a Cersei Dynex library. And you can see that they definitely have a lot more options. Um, just in their initial interface here. And let's just go click on this Danielle Steele book, Find in My Library, and we can see the, the record. And so, um, oh, I have a question over here. Can any library have access? Yes. Um, you got anyone can access um, our website. Um, all you have to do is go to the Nebraska Library Commission and then click on NLC catalog up here. And you can see what our records look like. Um, but you can see if we click here, let me see. Yeah. And so within your systems, you um, have the ability to um, um, decide what you want to show up in that mark record. And you can see here that Lincoln City has a lot more that shows up. They've got a full summary, they've got, and a lot of it depends on what is in the record to begin with. Um, but they've got some subject headings, some genre headings. Um, they show the ISBN, and of course that, that record we looked at in Mandarin doesn't have that, I, does, would not have an ISBN. Um, let's see, you know, again, we're going to get a billion and one hits, but let me see. Mm. Um, let's see here, um, let's see, okay. This looks kind of government-y. Oh, good. I'm glad that, um, OK. Lori, I'm glad that we're able to kind of um, undo some of your confusion or clear clarify some of that a little bit. Um, OK, so here's something. Um, again, in this basic record, you know, you can, you can decide what shows up here depending on what system you have. And, okay, so again, this is just a very um, basic record. Um, it pretty much is just, this is probably what is more or less in the MARC record. Okay, yeah, and so I hope this answers the question. I think that was Mary that had, oh, okay, if I'm understanding correctly, our ILS can be customized, but not by me as the local cataloger. Is that the sort of... Uh, is that the sort of response you're seeking? You know, Mary, that, it's a very open-ended question, and if that is the type of, if that's really the situation that your vendor can customize things maybe according to your specifications, um, this is just kind of a, an information-seeking tool. It's what what is going on in your library? Do you, you know, can you customize, or um, do you have to work with your vendor to customize? And um, at some of the libraries I've worked with um, in terms of customization, um, I'm from Montana originally and worked for several state agencies. And we were part of a consortium called the Montana Shared Catalog. And we were all Cersei Dynex libraries. And um, on kind of our record pages here, we had, um, we kind of had to go with, um, what the consortium decided as a whole in terms of customization. And we might have a wish list of what we wanted to see. 
And our system admins, our system administrators in the consortium would then work with Circe Dynex um, to either decide if that was going, if that could, was workable, or did we have to give up something? And so, Oh, okay. So, Mary, I think my confusion was that I've not known a library that could do its own customization without going through the ILS vendor. Um, I think you can. I'm not a systems librarian. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm, I'm a, I like to say I'm a good old-fashioned cataloger. And, and so I'm, I'm kind of guessing here a little bit, but I can certainly do a little bit of research. I think my understanding is libraries can do a certain amount of customization, that it kind of depends on um, you know where information is being pulled from in the MARC record. For example, we talked about, when I was talking about the GMD earlier, um, and these icons, these format icons that show up, um, you know, that can be pulled from a variety of sources. It can be pulled from in the, within the fixed field. Um, and so that's, it can be pulled. So it just depends on where information is getting pulled from. Um, I always encourage people, you know, ask, ask questions of your vendor, you know, what, if there are things you want changed or you'd like to see changed. Um, I know one thing, um, one thing we did have some influence over back in Montana in the shared catalog was kind of the facets over here and what did we want facets to show up and what facets did we want to show up. And we actually had to do some behind the scene work. Um, when we switched over to, to Enterprise um, in our MARC records because we were going to have like an endless amount of facets, like material type show up. And um, um, and you know, so we had to do a little bit of work there. Am I the only confused participant on this question? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you may be, you may be the only, oh, no, okay. Um, so no, you're not. And it is, it is a tricky question. And like I said, this isn't necessarily something I know a lot about, um, how to customize. Um, like I said, I think, I think it's kind of a partnership between the library and the vendor. And it's understanding what, um, what you can do. And if there are things you would like to do, can, you know, talking to your vendor. So I don't know if that answers your question or not, or if I've just really made things worse. It helps. Okay. Okay. And I will, I will look into that for you guys. Um, because that, that, that is a really good question about how much customization you can do. Um, let's see. I think many libraries now utilize cataloging programs that already create those records. Um, let's go back. Oh, did I just lose that question? Okay, I'm sorry. I just accidentally deleted that question. So if you could retype that question, I would really appreciate it. Um, oh, okay. Okay, I'm glad that I was able to clear that up. And if you're not sure, that's fine. You know, that that's fine. Um, like I said, I'm not necessarily sure what I can do here at the Library Commission. Um, I'm just, I'm the cataloger and <laughs> I get the information in there. I do, I do like to go in a lot of times if I'm not sure how something's going to look on the screen. I do like to go in and actually look at it, um, upload the record and look at it because I can do some editing. I can edit within Mandarin on the back end. Um, and if I think it's, if I'm confused by it, then I know a patron's going to be confused by it. 
Okay, I have worked with our vendor to customize, but this is helping me to think of more changes I could make. Good, I'm really glad to hear that. That is from Diane, okay. And I hope you guys don't mind that I'm reading your names as um, these questions come about. And Okay, I think many libraries now, you oh, this is the person who I accidentally erased. Thank you so much. I think many libraries are now utilizing cataloging programs that create those records if it is in the consortium. So many libraries have a pre, yeah. I think it was. Um, I think that's from Lori. Okay. I wonder. Okay. Oh, we have another one. Or maybe that was, was that? Okay, anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, um, a lot of people work with vendor records depending on how you order your materials and who you're working with. And you can get very basic records from the vendors and then go in and if you wish to enhance them, um, add things that like table of contents or summaries or more um, if you want to go in and, and do some local practices um, things like if you want to do subject headings like for specific like if you get a lot of Nebraska stuff and you want to put something in like Nebraska author yeah you can go in and definitely um, utilize that so thank you. How many participants are there today? <laughs> there are 18 out of 20. I did have two people who told me they were not going to be here today. And um, I capped the cat class at 20, but I think you guys know that, and it filled up really quickly. So um, we've got about nine minutes left. Um, I'm just going to kind of summarize what we've talked about. We, I've showed you a couple of the different um, resources um, for using MARC, OCLC, um, and uh, Library of Congress, um, the help guides they have. Uh, we've talked about the assignment, assignment one, kind of the survey, and um, question six in particular, um, what you can do to manipulate your OPAC display, and showed you some examples. Uh, we've, I've also answered some questions about the 260, which is the, the publishing field, and um, the subfield H and the 245, or the GMD. And um, I've also probably hopelessly um, confused people, hopefully not too much. Um, if you have questions afterwards, um, feel free to email me, and I'll do the best I can to kind of um, unconfuse you. And I am going to go and do a little bit of research on vendor displays and customization and what libraries can do, and maybe we can get some more answers. And next week, we're going to be talking about the 200 fields, and um, I will also talk about the assignment that we'll have. And, okay, that was a good, let's see what we have here. That was a good beginning, thanks. Well, thank you very much. Um, Yes. So unless there are any more questions or comments, um, I'm going to let you guys go early today. Well, I guess I don't have to let you because you can kind of come and go as you want. And you're welcome. Oh, I feel better about the Good. I'm glad. I'm really glad. And guys, there is, there, you know, don't stress too much about this. And I know that's really easy for me to say. Um, but I remember when I was first learning Mark, when I went to library school, I'd never really worked in the library. I'd never cataloged and decided, hey, I want to be a cataloger because these look like really cool jobs. I know, I'm crazy. And so I had no understanding of Mark or AACR2 or RDA. And it was very overwhelming. It was very confusing. And um, so I remember feeling that way, and and it's okay. It really is. Um, is there any a way we can see the other questions and comments? You know, I don't know. I will certainly look into it. I think they show up on the recording. Um, 
Oh, this is the best explanation of Mark that I have ever seen. Okay, Mary, um, your check is in the mail. <laughs> But, you know, just, yeah, just, just bear with me um, and, and, you know, ask, ask questions. And in putting these together, every time I've done a training session, I've always learned something new about Mark or RDA. And, and so I, I learned to, because um, I have either didn't learn it to begin with, didn't think to ask a question, or I, I just was too embarrassed to ask, and, or just kind of always accepted the practice. And so, yeah. So, um, I will post everything hopefully by tomorrow. I do, basically as soon as this is over with, I'm leaving to go to Grand Island for the Pioneer Consortium meeting. Um, the Library Commission, we just kind of go as consultants if they have cataloging questions or whatnot. And um, since I'm new, they want to introduce me. And so I will definitely get it up there by tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon at the latest. And um, if the questions are not um, apparent, like if you can't see them, what I will do is I'll go through and transcribe the questions and I will get that posted then to our little class website so you can at least see. And they'll be, they'll be anonymous. I know as in the chat I've said who asked them, but I'll make them anonymous. So, um, Okay. Oh, I'll be on the phone with you this afternoon. Looking forward to your intro. Okay. Oh, okay. That's Al the other, one of the other Allisons. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> um, on that note, um, I am going to stop recording and yes, for Scott's Bluff. I'm part. Yep. Co yeah. Koha. And that's a system I don't know anything about. So, Allison, I may have a lot of questions for you because I don't know anything about that system. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm kind of an old-fashioned cataloger. I, I just like to catalog. I don't necessarily mess around with the system. So, anyway, thank you so much for bearing with me as I struggle to get things posted and make sure the links are, um, that they work and that everyone has the right web address. And as we have figured out the software. So looking forward to seeing you guys, talking to you guys next week. No OPAC, oh, okay. Sorry, I'm rambling. I have a very bad habit of doing that. But um, <laughs> I am looking forward to talking to you guys next week. And feel free, you know, between then and now, if you've got questions, to email me and um, let me know. And um, yeah. Next week, the 200 fields, the 2XX, and we'll talk about that assignment, and I'll, I'll go over, or if you guys are interested, I can go over the results of this week's kind of um, questionnaire. So I am now stopping the recording.